in five minutes. Just saw these stripers busted in his pocket back here at the launch. Threw the jerk bait out there. Got this one. I'll show you the size of the bait that these stripers are feeding on. That's the size right there. There's millions of them underneath me right now. These stripers are just running through the school with their mouth open and eating hundreds of these at one time. So you gotta have something kind of small like that to match the hatch. Every once in a while you'll get one on the jerk bait like what I did, but ultimately this is what you need to get them. got my first bass on. I got it on the go-to crank, throwing it up on some rock piles. Just about ready to give it up. I've been doing it for about 20 minutes. Hadn't really hit anything. And then this guy hit. Let me show you how big he is. Second one on the go-to crank. Off another rock pile, another great, great bass. Probably another three or four pounder. Go-to crank. Great little bass, I tell you. With that go-to crank, you just gotta get it down on the bottom and then work it slow. These fish aren't real aggressive. They're just kinda hitting it. Uh, when I get it down the bottom, just kinda rattling around. One thing that I like about the go-to crank is it's got rattles in it. So when I throw it out there, I treat it more like a jerk bait than a crank bait. What I do is I get it down to the bottom, then I start kind of jerking it, hammering it back and forth, banging it off the rocks, making that rattle rattle. I think that's what's getting these bass is uh, they're hearing that rattle. Another good one right here, a bass number two. I've been out here maybe 
hour and a half, something like that. We're gonna keep hitting the rock piles with the go-to crank, see if we can get some more. Not as big as the last two, but third one on the uh, go-to crank here. <laughs> 